Today I'm reading from Paul's letter, his second letter to the Corinthians, uh, beginning in the fifth chapter, verses 16 through 21, which is the end of the fifth chapter. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away and everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, to Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have to say this is one of my favorite services of the year. I love it any time we can share together in the sacrament of baptism and any time we can, can help uh, young people confirm their faith. Uh, uh, we also, by the way, had three adults join our church uh, in our first service this morning, and it was great to, to welcome the converses and, and also uh, Jim Sapina into the church today, uh, transferring their membership here, and so we have new folks in the body of Christ in that way, in this part in, of the body of Christ. One of the things that I think is important, and I'm going to step down a step or two because I want to say this to you all first. Confirmation is not graduation. Confirmation is not graduation. And what I mean by that is This has been the end of a period of time in in the semesters you guys took the confirmation classes when you work through a program and you get to the end of something, right? I finished, you know, I finished the projects, I finished the stuff I was supposed to do, the notebooks, I was supposed to fill out the assignments that, that Ellen gave us, and I'm done with that. And so it feels like a graduation, but there's a difference. What's really different is that really confirmation is just a beginning. Just like baptism, it's another beginning. Some of you were baptized today, and some of you were baptized earlier in your life, but baptism, the sacrament of baptism, is one of the ways that the church talks about beginning our life with God. That through baptism, you experience the Holy Spirit. That's why we say the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and spirit. It's why when we bless the water, we're asking the Holy Spirit to be there. The Holy Spirit's that part of God that goes with you wherever you go. And so no matter where you are and whatever you do for the rest of your life as confirmands, you have been marked by Christ. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you, and no matter what you ever do in the future, good, bad, or indifferent, God loves you. And that can never be taken away from you. That can never be reduced or removed. God loves you. And so confirmation is a beginning, one of the important beginnings in our walk with Christ, it's a, it's a moment to say, yes, I know being a Christian is what my parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles do or my friends do, but I'm choosing to try to be a Christian, to walk in the Christian life myself. Doesn't mean we do it perfectly ever, but that we're learning, growing. 
there's a, there's a youth program that's connected to a retreat program called the Walk to Emmaus, and the youth version of it's called Chrysalis. And I don't even know if we have Chrysalis here in Iowa, but where I pastored in some other places, Chrysalis was available. I don't know how many of you ever know what a Chrysalis is, but, but it's, it's what a, a caterpillar weaves around itself that then allows it to become a butterfly. And I know that there's this neat song we've got in our, um, uh, and is it in the faith we sing? Um, um, Zach probably doesn't know what song I'm talking about. But it, it talks about uh, how uh, uh, cocoons come forth and out come butterflies. And every time we sang it at my last church, a scientist in my church would come up to me and say, moths come out of cocoons, butterflies come out of chrysalis. Well, true, I suppose. But um, the metaphor is there. Um, that what happens is that but, the butterfly starts out as a caterpillar, right? And if you had never, ever heard of butterflies or caterpillars, and somebody brought you a caterpillar and a butterfly, you would never suspect that that caterpillar would end up looking like that butterfly. You would just never believe that. They don't even look like they're related to each other. And yet there's a transformation process that goes on from from being a caterpillar to a butterfly that God has created in our creation that is just amazing. And you all are already, and all of us daily are going through change and transformation in our lives. We wake up each day and it's a new day. Each day and it's a new day. And we have new opportunities to do what God wants us to do. We wake up every morning with a clean slate to seek to try to do and be the best person we can be. And we do that in every way we can, whether that's by being a good friend to somebody that we know, uh, whether it's helping a neighbor, uh, helping, helping another student with a, with a project, whether it's saying a kind word to somebody who looks like they're down. Whatever it is, we seek to, to be people who try to grow in the faith that we have. But it's not graduation. There's a really bad old preacher joke that I'm going to tell anyway because I'm an old preacher. Uh, where there are three pastors who get together and they're all complaining that there's bats in their church belfry. You can see a bat in this building every once in a while. Maybe I shouldn't say that out loud, but you know, not this part of the building. Don't start looking around. And they were all trying to figure out how to get rid of the bats. And so one pastor says, well, I tried those, you know, those noise horn things, you know, you push and just, brrr, you know, and scared. It worked for a little bit, and then they came back. Another guy said, oh, we went even to more extreme measures. We brought in an exterminator who trapped the bats one at a time and carried them out and supposedly released them into the wild, and still somehow they found their way back. Then the United Methodist pastor said, oh, I got rid of our bats a long time ago. He said, well, how did you do that? He said, oh, I baptized them and confirmed them, and they never returned. <laughs> bad, right? Really bad. That's the exact opposite of what we hope for you all, and we hope for anybody who goes through this process. We hope that it causes you to want to return, to return to youth group, to return to, to study, Bible study, to, to be in the church for activities we don't want this to be the end, but just the beginning of your experience with the church. And the same is true for all of us sitting out here. We have different opportunities for new beginnings. Those who joined the church this morning as adults transferring their membership here have a new beginning as members of this congregation. But they had been Christians before. It's not like they just suddenly became Christians and joined the church. We, we all each day have to work in, in our faith, in our life, and seek to be what Paul calls in this passage ambassadors for Christ. I think most of, we, of us all know what an ambassador is supposed to do. An ambassador represents a leader, right? An ambassador is sent by a leader to kind of be the face of that leader. And so we send ambassadors to other countries to represent our government and, and to be the face of the government in another country. Well, you and I in this world, we don't just go out on the street and get to see Jesus every day, Right? We don't run into Jesus on the street. Jesus, we know, ascended to heaven and is with us in a different way right now. And so what being ambassadors for Jesus means is we are supposed to go out 
and be and do what Jesus would do if he were physically here. And so when we give a cold cup of water in the name of Jesus, when we say, do something nice for a friend in the name of Jesus, when we help our next door neighbor in the name of Jesus, when we, when we speak out on behalf of love and grace and justice in the name of Jesus, we are being Jesus for other people. And so the great goal of the Christian life is to so be like Jesus for other people as we grow in the love and grace that God has for us that we might almost get mistaken for Jesus. That someone might say when we do the right thing and when we reach out and help somebody, was that Jesus? Was Jesus here? When we... When we lift up somebody who's hurting, when we, when we say a kind word, did Jesus make them say that? Do they believe in Jesus? That's what this is about. I know the other thing I often say in confirmation other than this isn't graduation is that if you all and the church gets absolutely nothing else out of all the confirmation material that was passed out and all the stuff you wrote and all the things you filled in and all of the discussions you had, if you get nothing else, nothing else out of it, remember this. And maybe you learned this song when you guys were small. I did. Remember Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We hear little kids sing it, and we maybe learn to sing it growing up, but that's it. That's the heart of what you all know. Jesus loves you. The Bible tells you so. And we share that love with other people. Now, I want to say to the folks out here who are here as friends and relatives and, and loved ones of our confirmants today, you have every right to be pleased and proud of these young people today. They have professed their faith in a living God who is love. And we all know that all of us are still trying to grow. I am still not yet what God has created me to be. But I pray that each day I might get a step closer to being the person God created and wants me to be. And so for all of us here, we keep moving in the journey toward the high calling of the gospel of Christ and creating a loving, caring community that shows the world that God is love. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this class of confirmands and the faith that they have expressed today. Thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that you have been walking with them through this process, that you have walked with them since the moment of their birth, that you walk with them from their baptisms on into even eternity. Help us to remember all of us to be thankful for the ministry of the gospel and that we can be your ambassadors. Help us to grow in grace, grow in love, grow in your presence. Amen. Good Sunday morning to you everyone. It's Jeremy, your communications director. I'm here with the announcements that you need to know about. First, the Mighty Methodist softball team is kicking off another season and they need your help to fill the roster. Anyone 14 years and older or in ninth grade can play. The cost will be approximately $20 to $25, depending on the number of participants. Games are on Monday nights, and we must have a full team by April 9th. To sign up or get your questions answered, come to the Welcome Desk in the Narthex.
On Saturday, April 13th, the Cultivating Life Group and the trustees are joining together to have a spring cleanup day. Their goal? To make the grounds look great before Easter Sunday. Bring your shovels, gloves, even your pickup trucks. Anything will help. Again, that's Saturday, April 13th from 9 to noon. I want to make sure that you're aware of all the great things that are happening in the coming weeks. April 14th is Palm Sunday. That morning, we'll debut our first annual With All Your Heart Fair. The 8.30 service will be led by the Adult Chancel Choir in their second annual cantata service. The 9.45 service will feature the Children's Palm Parade, and from 9 until noon, the UMN will hold their annual Palm Sunday brunch. On April 18th, we'll have our Monday Thursday service at 6.30, and on Friday the 19th will be our Good Friday service, which will be a Tuesday service held in the hospitality room. Of course, we'll finish Easter with our Easter Sunday services, and at 9.45, we'll have our Easter celebration and egg hunt. And finally, today is Uncore Sunday. Here's a brief video. There's an old definition of a disaster, and that's to be without a star. And the thing that happens many times after disasters is that the power goes out in some places, and people can actually see the stars. But they can also see the stars in one another. Peace that would pass his understanding. UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, is the disaster and the development uh, arm of the whole United Methodist Church. When you give to UMCOR, you give 100% to the project you are supporting and to the disaster you want to respond to. UMCOR has been for more than 75 years in this business of being hope, of being there for people in need in the moment of disaster when they have lost everything. And through AMCOR, the United Methodist people are hope in these situations. What a privilege it is to be part of this important ministry, the United Methodist Church, to be able to say we're there, we bring hope, and we bring healing. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> what was that? Grab the camera. I don't know what's going on. <sighs> Guys, I think the cat's coming. Wow. <laughs>